Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store, and this week we're going to take a look at some Pete Howlett ukuleles. It feels like years since we last featured some Pete Howlett Revelators, um, and I'm extra excited today because on top of showing off a concert and tenor Revelator, I'm going to show off something that I really consider a main event piece. You know, when I make these videos, normally I end with something really, really special as a hope that it kind of keeps people interested, but I'm going to start with one of those ukuleles today because... Pete's just not making that many ukuleles anymore. Everyone he builds feels that bit more special because you don't know what's gonna come next. You might never see something like it again. And it becomes quite difficult because, you know, Pete makes what he wants to at this point. And he's never stopped being inspired by kind of tweaking his existing designs. And the ukulele we've got today doesn't really remind me of any other Howlet that we've had before. So I'm really excited to show it off. I'm gonna show it off now. This is, a Pete Howlett tenor. Let's just take a look at it. First of all, the sound hole. It's got more of a kind of oval, squashed, circle-shaped sound hole. And it's made of flamed colour, and it's such a lovely piece of flame colour. Look at the grain as you turn it. I feel like a rotisserie, but it's a good thing. There's just so many tiny little eccentricities around the wood as you turn it around and the back is just stunning one of the nicest tenor ukuleles that Pete has ever made for us really lovely so yeah it's flamed koa but what else do I need to tell you about it well the sound hole rosette here this thing that we're looking at up close that's made of burr chestnut you can see actually when you if you're familiar with chestnut wood and how it looks on furniture when you actually uh, come to look at the tiny bits of quilting and tiny bits of knots in this wood, you can see it for yourself. And I just, I don't think I, I know it's a stylistic thing, an aesthetic thing, but it's just nice to see something like burr chestnut against colour. I think it makes the colour pop. And especially when you've got that unique sound hole to go with it as well. You have an irrigated ebony fingerboard and bridge. So you've got really streaky shades of light and dark, very hard to get on camera, but you can see on the website photos, you know, parts of the wood are much lighter and tell their own story than others. With a tiny Snowden inlay in Mother of Pearl, just halfway up the fingerboard. You have the traditional Howlett headstock squared off at the top there with uh, gold Dujang tuners, I believe. That's what Pete always uses these days. They look like Dujang. You have a 36 mil nut width. Pete is, uh, he's making instruments that have that kind of Kamaka feel to the neck. So if you've ever played a Kamaka or, a, or like a traditional Martin, they're more, they're, they're kind of naturally comfortable instruments. They're not too wide, string spacing wide, they're wise, they're not too, Thin, like a Carla or some of the more modern Chinese made instruments it's just somewhere in the middle it's got kind of an English folk via Hawaii vibe it's kind of like hey noni noni in a Hawaiian shirt in the best possible way and uh, you have a pin bridge as well which is something that I I love on uh, well I love on ukuleles but you haven't seen on too many of Pete's ukes over the years until recently You've got a satin finish, and there's probably lots of other things I should tell you. Yes, the nut and saddle are made of Corian, so it's that kind of worktop material. It's, it's much harder to work with than bone, let me tell you. It takes hours to carve a Corian saddle, but it's really resonant. It's really uh, transparent. You know, when you play with a bone nut and saddle, the bone can be very inconsistent. What's good about Corian is it's very uh, level, so you don't get these kind of really bright bits, really kind of mid heavy bits to work with you're getting something that's just transient in its uh, effectiveness and finally I will just touch on the body depth the body depth of a Pete Howlett is just a tiny bit shallower than a Kanalea or a Kamaka it's it's a bit more like a Koaloha um, more like Aimua those kind of Japanese made ukuleles so it has just a tiny tiny bit slimmer profile to the body I feel like I've put across how much I like this instrument if anyone would like to buy it for me I am open to offers but for now if somebody would like to add this to their collection I'm sure that they would be extremely happy to have I think one of the finest ukuleles that Pete's ever made for us let's give this Pete Howlett customer play 
and see what you think. Okay, next up today we have a another headliner in its own right, a ukulele that I like to use in the thumbnails for videos. This ukulele is a Revelator, Peter Howlett Revelator, a tenor, and uh, we've looked at every single incarnation of the Revelator since the very first prototypes. If you haven't seen them before and this is the first time you've clicked on one, I urge you to go back and look through our channel at the other, I think I've made four or five other videos about previous Revelators that we've had. But what makes them cool is Pete continues to tweak the design, so I don't think we've ever really had two that are the same. And what's unique about this one is it's the first one to receive this brand new um, kind of scrolling font, the Revelator inlay on the headstock. I love it. It kind of reminds me, it's like it should be written on the side of a plane or a boat. It's just such a cool... Uh, font he's worked with. Hopefully it's based on his own handwriting or something cool like that. You have a Carina body which is a really lightweight material, really lovely, kind of looks like acacia but has um, like a like an alder or a kind of maple um, feel to it or sound to it and it looks fantastic here. He's used a really lovely piece of figured maple for um, figured Carina for the top and then some slightly more conventional Carina for the back. But the whole thing, just look how the neck joins the body. It's just so beautifully designed and put together. The cutaway there for upper fret access. You've got the Nautilus sound hole here, which is the bigger sound hole option that he offers. He also does a more conventional oval sound hole as well. And you also have here this shell inlay is it a shell? Yes, the shell inlay on the fingerboard. And the fingerboard itself, I'm just going to check the listing because I often forget these details. So it has an Indian rosewood bridge and a Kingwood fingerboard and the faceplate. Kingwood being, I believe, an African kind of derivative of rosewood. Um, we supply this ukulele in a case and it comes with a passive under saddle pickup. So it's a performer's uke at heart, but acoustically they have enough going for them that they really could be the gem in a high-end ukulele collection. I know a customer actually who has several very, very nice one-of-a-kind ukuleles that are, you know, astronomical prices, but plays their Revelator all the time as their main instrument. So there really is something about them, especially the thin, lightweight body going against you. Your, your body becomes the speaker cabinet when you play them in a way that they don't necessarily always become with a conventional tenor ukulele. Uh, we didn't talk about the tuners either, which are once again the young tuners, black tuners, open gear with some gold trim. Oh, and they've got gold ferrules on the front, which is a nice touch as well, I hadn't noticed before. You still have a 36mm nut width, it's still Corian, the nut and saddle. 
Um, we talked about that earlier in the video, really resonant, really lightweight. Let's give it a play and see what you think. The final ukulele we're going to look at today is a Revelator concert. And actually, this very ukulele got me in trouble. Um, I didn't feature it in a video when it first came in. I did a Facebook Live reveal to show people it because when I got it out of the box, I was really excited about a particular feature about it. But I assumed in my head that that meant I'd made a full video and it's been sat in stock since just before Christmas, I think. And I, no, the end of January and I just haven't made a video about it. So I'm in a bit of trouble about that. I need to feature it now. Quite a few people have asked for it and I just assumed that I'd already done it, but looking back through, I haven't, which is terrible. This Revelator concert, I believe is actually the second one Pete made. I think he made a prototype and then he made a more refined one here for us. It has the Nautilus sound hole like the tenor one we've just looked at with a really lovely Karina figured top but this one shines in a different way to the tenor we've just looked at because the back on this is stunning really lovely straight really straight grain but a lovely piece of uh, old growth Karina there with the nicest neck probably on a howlet certainly the nicest neck we've ever had this is a piece of Karina for the neck which I believe you could mistake for being kind of like a hundred year old whiskey barrel. There are some spec upgrades on this model that are not present on the other Howlet as well. So we have, first of all, uh, Goto planetary tuners. So a much more uh, high spec tuner than the standard Dijon gear tuners with the old fashioned Howlet headstock with a 36 mil nut width, uh, Karayan nut and saddle and once again, a different shell inlay for the concert. I really like the tiny strap buttons that Pete uses as well. They're a really nice touch. And this instrument didn't come with a, um, a, a, a square shaped hard case, one of the Howlet ones, but instead we have put this ukulele in a TGI hard case. So it comes with a hard case. It's just not the same as what we get with the tenor ones. Even so, this ukulele deserves to be played it deserves to be heard so i'm going to play it for you now acoustically and because it's on the quieter side i am going to plug it into an amp and just give you a sound sample plugged into an amp as well
there you have it folks we've taken a look at three pete howlett ukuleles but which was your favorite it's very easy if you're a tenor person to fall in love with either of those tenors in fact i could totally see the justification in having both if you're a tenor player that they do very very different things and they both do them very very well um, if you have any questions you can get in touch it's alex at ukulele.co.uk or you can call me on 01202 430 820 um, I'd be really grateful if you check out my own website, which is ukeswith.com or my YouTube channel, Ukes with Alex, because there are tutorials, there are reviews, there are all sorts of things that are more of the same of what you're enjoying on this channel. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I will be back very, very soon.